Well, greetings, Titans. Welcome to the big picture. I'm Dave, and this is Dave Takes It On. My MG ZF won't charge at an open to all Tesla supercharger. Why is my Kia EV6 charging so slowly at an open to all Tesla supercharger? I receive many comments like this, and I do know the answer. So let's see what's actually going on. Well, a few years ago, Tesla began to open up just a few of its exclusive supercharger network to non-Tesla cars equipped with CCS2. Today, that total has now passed 75 locations, each of those with around 8 to 10 individual chargers. This is now a really, really substantial ultra-rapid network in its own right. But many EV owners are having problems. Uh, by the way, none of the following applies to Chadamo. Sorry. Uh, so let's just back up a bit. All Tesla EVs, Model S, 3, X and Y. That spells sexy, or it would do if Ford hadn't patented the name Model E. Uh, so Elon used 3 instead. Um, and now the Cybertruck. Uh, they can all charge at any supercharger ever. All the Tesla EVs, anyone ever. Because these uh, EVs were originally equipped with a Tesla proprietary socket for use in any Tesla supercharger. When you plug in to a charger, uh, it detects the voltage and type, AC or DC, and just switches it to the right one internally. This made charging a Tesla in the early days really simple. One socket, one plug, plug it in, home or away, and the car does the rest. So initially, all Tesla EVs used batteries that were around 400 volts. There must have been reason for it at the time. Because Tesla made their own battery packs and their own chargers, uh, it was really easy and logical for them to set the voltages to be compatible uh, and roughly the same. Now, this is an easy guide, so I'm going to ignore variations in the voltage as the battery charges or discharges. So charges were set to provide approximately 400 volts. The cars accepted 400 volts. Everything was happy. Well, elsewhere in the EV industry, things were not as simple or uniform. Manufacturers made battery packs, all different voltages, many round about the 400, but some chose 800, which they considered to be better. In fact, it is sort of. You cannot charge an 800 volt battery with 400 volt charger. Even a pretty flat 800 volt battery will still be well above 400 volts. So those manufacturers of the 800 volt packs asked or pressurized the charging manufacturers to make chargers that could charge them. And because even 800 volt batteries differ slightly, they set the standard around about a thousand volts or pretty close. Uh, same for the plugs. Europeans uh, subsequently chose CCS2 as the universal standard, and America chose quite recently the North American charging standards, NACS, uh, which is just Tesla's own proprietary connection. Well, this gave EV manufacturers a challenge. So in the UK, all Tesla S and X models only ever have the Tesla connection, and all non-Tesla EVs in America only have CCS2. So adapters were invented. This allows the Model S and X owners in the UK, like me, to connect to CCS2 and all CCS2 owners in America to plug into the NACs. It's since got easier. Now all UK and European Teslas have CCS2 as standard and all non-Tesla EVs in America are transfer uh, transposing over to the new NAC standard. So for new EV owners, that really simplifies matters. But for older EVs in both Europe and America, they have to use an adapter, always will. But the new 1000 volt standard for all third party charger was of no use to Tesla, who had every single model prior to the release of the very recent Cybertruck running on 400 volts. So Tesla chargers continue to be 400 volts until just a couple of years ago when they began opening them up to non-Teslas. And this created a new problem. Although every single Tesla EV ran on 400 volts, some EVs, like the Porsche Taycan, Kia EV6, Hyundai Ioniq 5, they had battery packs running at around about 800 volts. And you cannot charge an 800 volt battery using 400 volts. It doesn't work. 
But EV manufacturers were one step ahead. Way back when they released their 800 volt battery packs, they knew most of the chargers already out there didn't have 1000 volt capability. If this situation remained, then you could never ever charge a Kia EV5 um, at a public charger, and unless it was a thousand watt capable, and they were very few and far between. So, imagining 800 volts one day would uh, become the norm, they built in a temporary backup plan. Without going too technical, some installed a voltage doubler in the car, taking the charge of 400 volt, doubling up to 800, but this also reduced the current. But it worked. Some chose to use the regen brake motors feeding in 400 volts, but they output 800 volts. Anyway, there are other workarounds, but it meant that these 800 volt CV could now charge anywhere, even a 400 volt chargers. But the cost was the power of the charger now was limited to whatever the workaround actually did. And in most cases, being temporary, uh, until all the charger were 1000 volts, it only allowed charging in some cars as little as 50 kilowatts and in others maybe as much as 150. Um, very few. There, there's probably possibly some by now that can do more but very rare. Cars like Taycan, Kia EV6, uh, e-tron, GT, Lotus Electra, uh, those owners will only ever get between 50 and 150 kilowatt when plugged into a 400 volt charger which until recently was about half of them and all of the Tesla superchargers. Well I said until recently because two things have happened. First Tesla is now opening much of their supercharger network to EVs that need 800 volts. And second, Tesla has now made their first EV with 800 volt arch architecture, the Cybertruck. So, com so combined with the previous biggest failing of non-Tesla EVs to charge being the ultra short cables, uh, requiring some EVs to block two bays, and the advent of more 800 volt uh, EVs, they discontinued the V3 and launched the V4 charger, longer cable, hailed as future-proof. But before you e-tron GT and uh, Taycan drivers go screaming off your nearest V4 supercharger, open to all, I said they were future-proof, not future-ready. For financial reasons, Tesla is not going to make all their chargers uh, to be 800 volt for just a tiny percentage of EVs that drivers bought elsewhere, not from Tesla. And in Europe, there's no sign of the Cybertruck ever being released here. So sorry, Hyundai, Kia drivers, no 800 volt charging at this stage. But ch uh, checking a V4 charger recently, that technical label states voltage between 400 and 1000 volts output. So problem solved, not quite, because the charger is plainly now capable of charging these 800 volt EVs. But checking the power cabinet, technical labels, they were rated at a maximum of 500 volts. And this is what future proof means, capable of up upgrading in the future without needing to change the chargers. The work will uh, to upgrade will take place in the power cabinets. So when this is going to happen? Oh, don't hold your breath, not anytime soon. Every single Tesla driver in Europe will be driving around with 400 volt battery packs for many, many years to come. The Cybertruck is the first, but the new Model 2 now is reported also to have 800 volt architecture. It gives greater weight and efficiency advantages. So all you Kia EV drivers uh, out there shouting for Tesla to upgrade all their current and future V4 chargers to 1000 volts, forget it. Why should Tesla spend a fortune on an immediate upgrade only for the benefit of less than, what, quarter of a million or so Ionic or Kia EV owners in the whole world who refuse to buy a Tesla? So, no hope. You're stuck with 50 kilowatt charging. No, you see, the V4s are future proof. So, if the Model 2 is going to be installed with 800 volt batteries, then Tesla Model 2 owners from 2025 onwards will also need to be able to charge ultra fast at the 800 volts. They cannot use at all any of the existing 400 uh, volt chargers. That includes the current V4s that are rated at 400 volts. They won't work. At all. So there are two options. In a worst case scenario for 800 volt drivers, other than Tesla, the, but the best possible choice for Tesla drivers, the Model 2 might be built and supplied with a workaround on board, a doubler or quadruplier or faster. This is by far the best choice for Tesla, because otherwise 
owners of the new Model 2 could only ever charge at the full rate at only the brand new V4 superchargers installed with the 1000 volt capability. They at present don't even exist. So doing this double quadruple thing will ensure all Model 2 drivers will get the capability to charge at any Tesla supercharger, old or new. They might not be exactly full speed, but it will be amazingly fast. Now alongside this, Tesla will probably upgrade future installations of chargers to the 1000 volt standard from when they're commissioned. So over time, they will become more readily available. Well, the second option is for Tesla to do an immediate upgrade to every single existing V4, V3 and V2 charger. And this is least likely to happen because the power being supplied to the superchargers from the grid may not be up to anything like the sort of upgrade. We know how long it takes to get power to a new location at the moment. Imagine if each future application asked for twice the power and each existing application went back and asked for a doubling or quadrupling of existing power. Well, sorry, Kia, Hyundai, Porsche and Lotus drivers, you're not likely to get any serious power speed out of Tesla superchargers open to all CCS2 vehicles anytime soon. Am I allowed to say you should have bought a Tesla? So, anyway, I won't be affected. See, my Model S is ancient. Uh, my power charging is capped out at 150 kilowatts uh, charging rate. So none of this will affect me in the slightest, unless I decide to trade it in for the latest Model 2 when it becomes available. Now, if that happens, I can guarantee that somehow or other, every single one of those new Model 2s will charge at or very near to full speed at every single Tesla supercharger that already exists. Elon would not allow the releasing of a car that could charge in under 10 minutes, but takes 40 minutes at all existing superchargers. What would happen? The conclusion is likely to be years before you get uh, more than about 150 kilowatt maximum from a Tesla supercharger if you don't own a Tesla. It could be down as low as 50 kilowatt. So are they out of bounds? Well, no, not at all. Uh, just have a check on the internet, Fastnet, EV charging. They do a lovely speed table on their website telling you what you can get. So BMW i4, maximum charging speed, 200 kilowatts when plugged into a Fastnet 300 kilowatt charger. Most Audi e-tron only get 120. Hyundai Ioniq 5 tops out 150, but almost instantly drops to 120. MG ZS 78 kilowatts, MG4 88 kilowatts. The Kia EV6 58 kilowatt hour battery gets 175. In other words, most of you are already getting far slower charging than you thought. You thought a car like the Lotus Electra with 360 kilowatt charging plugged into a 350 kilowatt charger would give you full speed. Think again. Their website states if you plug it into a 400 volt architecture charger, it will charge at 88 kilowatts. 88. Interesting here is the Chinese rubbish they're trying to force on us. The Xpeng G6 plugged into a Fastnet 300 kilowatt charger gets 280 kilowatts. Hmm. You wonder how on earth they're going to sell this rubbish. But there are two further restrictions you need to be aware of. Tesla V4 cables are their own developed and patented design. They are fully water cooled and they are rated at above a thousand kilowatts. But in practice, the charger plug can still get quite warm and thermal throttling will occur. All EV chargers everywhere monitor everything to do with temperature everywhere. Cables, chargers, plugs, everything. And they are extremely accurate and will always throttle instantly to prevent problems. Not much throttling often, but definitely there. Many of the third party cables are less efficiently water cooled and so probably cannot even take the full power that both the EV and the charger are capable of providing. 800 volt chargers delivering full power are not as common as many people think. But the final killer is the power to the charging location. National Grid does not provide the full 23 kilowatts, um, being 230 volts mains, uh, 100 amps, uh, to the houses, every single house. They know that not all houses will be using full power all at the same time, and if they do, they can just throttle the power. 
uh, they uh, target 18 kilowatts, quite a lot less. Now, EV chargers are the same. It's unlikely that every single location provides exactly enough power uh, to the site so that all of the chargers uh, can operate at exactly the same time at exactly the full rated power. They compromise. So even if the car is capable of 360 kilowatt and the charger says 350 kilowatt, you won't get that if all the other chargers at the location are already in use. My advice? Well, I suspect that a Tesla supercharger open to all will give you a decent charging speed, not full speed, but good enough to justify using them because you're paying half the price in many cases that a quicker charger would cost. For ultimate speed, stick with Ionity and others that can actually provide that. But for money savings, just sit at the supercharger a little bit longer. How much does cost affect your charging decisions and locations? I'm Dave.